G'day everyone and welcome to Medieval Mayhem. On this channel you'll find lots of reviews into medieval gear. You'll find lots of DIY videos into costuming and furniture. And today we're going to make a pair of leather van braces. Also known as arm guards, also known as braces, that all that kind of thing. Uh, and this is perfectly suitable for Dark Age reenactment. Vikings, Saxons, Normans, right through into the, the higher Middle Ages. Alrighty, let's get to it. Uh, for a leather project like this, these are my basic tool kit. From right to left we have a basic hammer. We have a uh, box knife, in this case by Stanley. I have a punch for punching holes with. I have a, uh, a fine work sort of scalpel type knife. There's a, what's called a stylus, which is a, uh, I guess a blunt metal pin and that's just used for scribing detail onto leather. I have a leather, leather beveler. I have a needle and some waxed thread. Uh, because it's waxed thread, I'll then use a lighter just to seal the ends. Uh, obviously a ruler of some description or a straight edge. Uh, I also have a, um, a tool to mark out uh, edges from the um, side. I also have leather dye and then also a sealer. So if you're going to dye the leather, then uh, it's important to seal it. And what that does is protect it from UV light and also, I guess, just rain and stuff like that as well. Uh, otherwise, the, the dye will fade. And then I have some sponges to apply both the dye and also the sealer. Don't be too concerned if you're cutting several, like making several passes at a cut. It's better to make a safe cut than a dangerous one. Uh, I like to replace my blades on my knife fairly frequently actually. Um, they don't cost that much, like 20 cents each or something, really when you think about it. So. And a sharp blade is always much safer, actually, than a, than a dodgy bl blunt one. I think it's important to care for your tools. Righto, the, uh, the first thing we're going to do is just mark out the edges around these uh, braces. Okay, so I'm using a tool here. This is great. Um, this is going to give me a nice uh, consistent edge around the side of my braces. Right, now I want to go one, just to uh, make a second mark. Alrighty, now we're just going to wet the leather to do some tooling. You need to allow a fair bit of Alrighty Let's now uh, see if this will take the pattern The first thing I'm going to do is use this wheel and I used this on the, the, uh, the archery bracer uh, just recently. It's been such a warm day, you have to keep uh, keep the leather wet. Not wet wet, but a bit moist. Alright, let's um, 
see how we can go. Hopefully you can see there, we're now starting to get some nice tooling work. Uh, this is a really nice Celtic weave. I purchased this a while back but haven't really had the opportunity to use it as much as I thought I might do. Alright, okay. The next thing we're going to do, um, I'm going to try and putting a fleur de -lis on this one. Uh, now we're just going to cut out the buckles. The braces themselves, you can see them drying off really well quite a warm day here. Um, I'm just going to quickly paint the, the two fleur-de-lis, leave that to dry and then uh, we'll be putting on some seal, correction the dye and seal a bit later. Uh, whilst that's drying, we're just going to bevel the edge. I bevel the edge on all of my leather projects. Uh, I think it's a really good thing to do. Adds a little bit more class to what you're doing. Yo, edges beveled. Just gonna put those aside to dry. Got a, a fairly rustic looking brass buckle. I'm gonna put a, a hole in using a stamp. I'm just eyeballing this, I'm not doing anything crazy. Um, approximately a centimeter, maybe as much as half an inch. So, next step is going to be sewing and to do that we're going to need to stamp a few holes. I'm very quickly going to dye and seal the leather now. I prefer to hand stitch all my leather projects as opposed to use rivets. Uh, rivets are not historical sort of at all. Uh, alrighty, so the easiest thing to do to start your sewing off is to go around your finger twice and then roll it down slightly and this creates a really useful knot uh, like so. Nothing too crazy, nothing too big or anything. And then it's a simple case, it's like a back stitch, what we're trying to achieve, but it's technically called a double saddle stitch and it's incredibly strong. Obviously needs to be strong for this sort of application. Uh, even if it's just really sort of more fantasy orientated, you're still going to be doing, you know, a bit of movement and so on. So you stitch one way, in, or sort of in one direction, so to speak and then go back the other way.
Alrighty, so what that does is it creates this really nice kind of stitch pattern. But as I say, it is really quite strong. Now, um, some people have asked me recently about uh, lining. Should they line their projects? Um, I don't think so. So what we're going to end up with is so what we're going to end up with is something that looks like this, and then you just do the same for each one. Alrighty, so that's how simple that is. Now, um, some people have asked me about lining these. Yes, you can. I'd probably use something like a much thinner leather. Uh, but that's up to you. Um, stitching, this is a waxed linen thread so you can simply um, heat the back of it with a lighter or something and, and that'll work for that. Uh, if you wanted to line these I'd use something like a 1.8 millimeter or less leather. Uh, I, I wear these on top of um, uh, gambas or chain mail so as they would have been done historically. So uh, I'm not overly fussed about um, uh, whether it's lined or not, it doesn't need to be for me. Really, really, really happy with these. These have come out really well. I've put a bit of extra dye onto the straps. Um, the fleur de lis have come out really nicely. Uh, it's really comfortable to wear. I've got full movement in my hands, and that's really good. Um, this is 3mm leather. This is not hardened. Uh, this is 3mm leather, not hardened. So this really at this stage is, is more of a LARP thing or a costume thing or a fantasy thing, whatever. Um, I do intend to harden these and I'm going to do a video on it. Uh, you can harden them with beeswax or uh, that kind of thing and boil them. And what that does is it turns them into a very uh, robust piece of armour. Anyway guys, uh, really happy with that, that uh, project. Uh, they've come out really nice. A really nice colour, the, the detail on it is really good. Uh, I'm really happy and very impressed with this. So there we go. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I will catch you in my next video.